Hello everyone, thanks for clicking on this video. Uh, this tutorial is going to be about how you can use Git in PyCharm. And since most of the videos on YouTube about Git are mainly using Terminal to uh, get familiar with the basic commands of Git, uh, I'm going to use um, PyCharm and show you the graphical user interface that it provides for Git, which is very useful and makes life a whole lot uh, easier. So I'm going to show you how you can uh, pull project from your remote repository uh, and then make changes to it, push them back and generally how you can uh, track your files and modify them using uh, PyCharm's uh, Git GUI. So first of all we're going to go to GitHub and create a new remote repository. And in order to create a new remote repository, you just have to click on this uh, top right hand corner uh, plus sign and then choose new repository. Uh, I'm going to name this uh, demo and write some random description. So this is our demo project. I'm going to leave it public and I'm not going to add files here, we are going to add them locally and just press create repository. So from here we don't have anything uh, in our project currently, but we're going to clone this to our local repository using PyCharm. So if we go ahead and open PyCharm, we can see that we have three options. We can either create a new project, uh, open already existing project or get from version control system. And since we are using a remote repository, we are going to click on this button. And then it asks for the URL of our uh, remote repository. So we can copy that from here. So SSH uh, selected, we can just copy this link and then paste it to our URL tab and then just press clone. So now our project has been opened in PyCharm and we're going to use uh, PyCharm to add some files to our project and then we're going to push them back to our remote repository. So first of all, I'm going to right click on our uh, project file and then go to new and then choose file. And I'm going to create a readme file. Uh, I'm going to use the MD extension, which stands for Markdown, and it's just a way of formatting your text files. So every project in general needs to have a readme file, which gives a general understanding of what project is about. And I'm just going to create one heading here. So this is a Git tutorial. Uh, the content of these files is not relevant for this video since we are just going to use these files to demonstrate uh, git commands. So from here we can save our file and as you can see here it is uh, currently marked in red and that means that git is not tracking uh, this file and if we want to add this file to git uh, or in other words add this to staging area we we can do that uh, by right clicking on our file and then going to git and then pressing add uh, the shortcut uh, for this command is control alt a so you can use that if you want and as you can see it turns green which means the, that git is currently tracking our file so from here I'm going to add one more file, which is going to be a Python file. Let's name this main. And as you can see here, uh, PyCharm by default asks us if we want to add this file to Git. But since we can do that manually later, I'm just going to uh, skip this option. But you can use it if you want um, to add this file to the staging area from the beginning. Um, in this uh, Python file, I'm just going to write one line. Let's print something. So let's, for example, print hello git 
and also we need to configure the python interpreter for our project and if your inter and if your python interpreter is not configured you can do that by going to uh, file and then settings and then python interpreter and from here you can choose add and then from here add a python interpreter that you like and then press ok um, so now that uh, Python interpreter has been configured, we can actually uh, run Python files in our PyCharm uh, environment. So I'm just going to press run, then main, and as you can see, it uh, prints hello git. So from here, I'm going to add this file to our staging area. So I'm just going to right click on it and then go to git add. And if we want to see our uh, files that are ready to be committed, we can go to this commit tab uh, right uh, below the project uh, tab. So from here under the changes, you can see that we have two files, uh, the main file and the readme file we have just added. And in order to commit uh, our changes, we just have to mark them and then write our commit message. So I'm just going to write, this is our project initial state and from here we have two options we can either commit uh, or we can commit and uh, push to our remote repository uh, at once but I'm just going to commit for now And in order to see our commits, we can uh, go ahead and click this uh, git tab on the bottom left corner. So in our current uh, master branch, which is the default branch, you can see that we have made one commit. And if we want to push these changes uh, to our remote repository, we can just um, uh, use this uh, green arrow on uh, the top right corner to push. So it shows uh, which files are going to be pushed uh, to our origin or in other words to our remote repository. So we can go ahead and press push. Um, so now, so now that uh, our changes ha have been pushed to our uh, origin master branch, we can go ahead and uh, refresh our page in the GitHub. And as you can see here, the two files that we have uh, just added locally appear in our remote repository. So now that we have added those files to our remote repository, I'm also going to show you how you can pull the changes from your remote repository uh, to your uh, local system. So for example, if we create a new file in our remote repository by adding file here, and I'm going to add a new text file. So this is going to be test.txt. And I'm just going to write something like this is a remote file and then commit this new file. So now we have this file in our remote repository, but we don't have it locally. Um, and in order to update uh, your uh, current uh, local repository, you, you can just go ahead and click this uh, update button uh, here. And as you can see here now, the test.txt file also appears in our uh, local repository. Okay, so the next thing that I want to cover is how you can add a gitignore file. So in case there are files in your uh, repository that you don't want git to track, you can add them to the gitignore file and they won't be tracked by git. So in order to do that, I'm going to go to my uh, demo file, demo folder, and then add a new file. So let's say that we want to ignore all the PDF files that are currently in our uh, project. So I'm going to create a new PDF file and let's name it random.pdf. 
and uh, in case we don't want uh, git to track uh, any kind of pdf files we can just go ahead and click on this file and then go to git and then add this to git ignore so this will create a git ignore file and i am going to add this to my staging area uh, right from the beginning and currently it only ignores the random.pdf file so only this pdf file but if we want to uh, ignore all the pdf files that will be created in our folder we can just replace this random with the asterisk uh, sign and asterisk basically means anything.pdf so any kind of pdf file uh, from now on will be ignored in our project uh, so from here I'm going to commit uh, the changes that we have currently made. I'm going to name this configuring git ignore and then commit um, and then commit this to git. So uh, from here if we go ahead and create one other PDF file, let's name it file.pdf. Uh, the git just ignores it and doesn't tell us to add this to staging area or, or do anything with it. And uh, this git ignore file is not only about just ignoring some uh, files, you can also include a whole uh, folders or repositories and tell uh, a git to ignore those folders for example. And the last topic that I want to cover is about branches. How do we create branches and work uh, on a different branches and then push them to our remote repository. So in order to create a new branch, you just have to click on your current working branch and uh, the head pointer currently shows that you are working on the master branch. So in order to create a new branch uh, from your current master branch, you have you have to uh, you have to right click on it and then uh, choose new branch from the selected and then give it a name. Let's name it development branch. And the branches, if you don't know, just allow you to work independently, uh, like create different workflows and uh, which will not affect one another. So the changes that we make on the development branch won't affect for example the changes on on our master branch but if there are commits in our development branch that we make in the future and we want them appear in our master branch or our main branch we can do that by uh, merging those branches together so now that we have created this development branch we are now working in it so now we can go ahead and make some changes to our development branch for that i'm going to uh, click on our project folder and then create a new file and let's name this dev file let's add it to our staging area and then go ahead and commit the changes and let's name this making changes to dev and go ahead and commit. So as you can see here we have made a new commit to our development branch but if we go to our master branch it doesn't appear here but if we want to make these changes also appear in our master branch we can uh, make it happen by merging those branches together so to do that we have to first of all check out or switch to our master branch and we do that by right clicking on our master branch and then going check out and after that we can right click on the development branch and then select merge selected into current so this will apply all the changes that we have made to our development branch into the master branch and from here we can go ahead and uh, push all the changes we have made to our uh, remote repository so from here if we go to our uh, github repository and check it we can see that all the files uh, appear here including the dev 
uh, file because we pushed it from our uh, master branch but we can see that we currently have only one branch in our remote repository and in order to fix it we have to go back to our uh, development branch check out to our development branch and then push this uh, to our remote repository so from here if we go back to our remote repository and refresh it you can see that we now have two branches development branch and master branch appear uh, also in github so that was all that i wanted to cover in this video thanks for watching if you made it this far and in case there are other git related topics that you want me to cover you can uh, tell me that in the comment section Thanks for watching and goodbye.